Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R730 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on NVMe. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R730 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, so this video is going to be specifically focused on NVMe. We're going to cover the three different potential options that the R730 has and the different ways that you might be able to actually see them. And then at the end, we're going to show you how to enable slot bifurcation for the M.2 option. Okay, so the, the types of options that you can use, there's U.2, uh, which is uh, basically a fancy way of saying a, a 2.5 inch drive that you can actually physically install into the back plane. Uh, we're going to go over uh, the PCIe slot version where you, you know, physically install it into your PCIe. And then we're going to go over the M.2 option that you will need either a Dell Boss card or a Super Micro card. Which one? We'll let you know. Um, so let's start first. Let's go with the U.2s. Um, so with the U.2s, uh, unfortunately the R730 does not have a solution. Um, if you watched our 630 video uh, on the NVMe, uh, specifically with the 10 bay, you can install a kit, and this is actually the kit. I put it here, even though the 730 doesn't have one. Um, but it's uh, you know you have a card, you have a cable, you install it, and then the last four slots for the uh, R630, um, it allows you to install the U.2. But I will note with the R630, it does have to be Dell firmware. You can't put in uh, just any regular old Intel or Samsung. Uh, it has to be Dell firmware. Okay, but with the R730. U.2s are out. You can't use them, uh, which was unfortunate because I love that as a solution for the R630s personally, but you can't use them. Okay. Next option, PCIe. Well, same situation. If you install just a regular old Intel or Samsung, it will not work. You need a Dell uh, NVMe PCIe. So the Intels and the Samsungs that don't have Dell firmware just won't recognize it all. They're out. Okay. But the ones that do, that do have a Dell firmware, they will um, actually work, but it's super limited, unfortunately. If you um, if you try to go into the iDRAC setting to look at it, it will uh, show up, but not as a physical disk. So you can't install an OS onto it. You can't use it in RAID configuration. There's basically nothing you can actually do with it um, in the iDRAC side. Um, if you were to install VMware and try to uh, put an OS on it, same thing, won't work. So really all you can do is if you go into uh, the BIOS and their device configurator, um, you can um, use it basically as extra storage, uh, which is still nice, um, but unfortunately the PCIe version is just very, very limited and there's not a whole lot you can do with it, okay? So to me that's kind of out. Um, so really the winner here for the R730 are the M.2s. Um, the M.2s are the, uh, the one solution that um, has some actual possibilities where you can put an OS onto it and do some extra things. But there's some keys here, okay? You can't use uh, the 14th gen Dell po Boss card. Um, you would think that it would be uh, backwards compatible and you'd be able to install it into the 13th gen and it'll work just fine. It does not work. We actually had to do a solution with a super micro card um, and that's actually how you can get it to work. So the M.2 is definitely the winner. Um, with the M.2, and again, you have to use the Super Micro card. Um, you can actually uh, use them uh, as a virtual machine um, or as a data store. Uh, you can install the, uh, an OS onto uh, each NVMe. Um, it's basically the, the best solution for NVMe for sure when it comes to the, uh, the R730 server as a whole. Um, and one thing actually I wanted to note about the PCIe that I kind of skipped over, um, if you do want it, uh, or want to use it for extra uh, storage, uh, you might run into an issue when you go into the BIOS uh, to try to actually see it. Um, there's a uh, setting that's called uh, slot disablement, and you might actually have to enable slot disablement uh, to be able to use the PCIe card. So I wanted to just touch on that before we got too far along with the uh, M.2s. With the M.2s, um, the way that you need to make them work is you have to go and enable slot bifurcation. And if you, if you log in to your system and you don't have that as an option, then you need to update your BIOS. Uh, it, when the 730s originally came out, slot bifurcation wasn't an option. NVMe wasn't an option. Um, this was something that Dell added later with one of the BIOS updates. So you just have to make sure that you have updated BIOS. Then you can go in 
um, enable slot bifurcation, and then you can use your M.2s and you'll be able to uh, make it into a virtual machine. And we'll actually show you after we install them exactly how to do step-by-step -step, uh, instructions on the slot bifurcations. So we'll show you how to install the M.2, we'll show you how to install the PCIe, and then after we're uh, done, we're gonna actually show you how to enable uh, the slot bifurcation setting so that you can use the M.2, which is a big winner here, and we're gonna go over step-by-step -step instructions on that. Let's get rolling. All right, got my ESD gloves on. We're safe to uh, put the two different NVMe solutions into our R730. Uh, we're going to start with the PCIe first, and then we're going to circle back to the M.2 since that is the big winner. So let's go ahead and put them to the side. And again, I do want to note with the, P uh, the PCIe one, you do need to have Dell firmware. I know I said that in advance, but that's really important to just to make sure you have, because if you don't, it will not work. So, all right, so the PCIe... Um, I don't have the uh, the low profile bracket on it, which you definitely want to make sure you have. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have dust and just stuff getting in the back. Uh, I'll pretend like I do to show you the proper steps. So what we're going to do, we're going to come over here to riser one, and we're just going to hold the two circles right here and just lift it straight up. Sometimes it can be a little bit tough to pull out, uh, so just be you know somewhat you might have to pull it a little bit tough is all I'm saying. But in general, still be careful because you don't want to damage the slots. So all right, so there's two slots. Or there's two blue dots right here. This first one right here is going to remove this latch, open it up. The second one right here, uh, and do be careful as soon as you do this, these uh, potential brackets right here could fall out. So just open this up as well. You're going to push this blue down. And then you don't want to use the top one um, because it might not actually fully fit in. Uh, this plastic piece right here might get kind of jammed into it. So you want to use uh, the bottom or the second one. I'm just going to do the second one, so we're going to remove this. And we're going to install the actual uh, PCIe card. So we're just going to line everything up. Um, and again, you have to open this to lock in the bracket that goes with it, even though I don't have the bracket on here right now. So we're going to close this up. And you'll see it's locked into place. And then when we close this, it locks it on the back end. So now your card is physically installed. And I'm going to show you this. This is why you need to make sure that you have the bracket on it too because look at how much dust and junk would get in there if you don't have it so just make sure you have the, the right bracket and then we're going to come back in and we're going to install the riser one back into the motherboard so just slide it back down make sure it's all flush and push it in and you can hear it and feel it when you're doing it kind of click back into place and really it was just that easy now we've got our PCIe uh, NVMe installed. Uh, again, it's not the best solution in the sense of all you can really do is use it for kind of extra storage. Uh, I am a big fan of the M.2s that we're about to show you. So I'm going to pop this out, fast forward, and show you how to install this one. All right, so in order to do this, we're going to need to remove riser one. So you'll notice the two slots for your fingers right here. You're just going to pull this bad boy up. And I will note when you get in here, uh, we currently have the uh, the bracket here that we're going to need to remove. In order to do that, this uh, blue circle right here, when you push this down, this will open up the uh, uh, the black latch right here. Okay, and then you can simply just take out your low profile, and now we're going to install the new one. So uh, a couple things going on here. You need to make sure you line up uh, the low profile with the insertion here. You need to make sure that your leads are all lined up. So a couple things going on that you need to just be uh, be aware of as you're installing it. Um, it's honestly a very very simple process overall but you just need to make sure you line everything up like so and make sure you fully insert it. So you see it's fully inserted back here and then we're just going to close our black latch to keep it locked in place and then we're gonna put riser one back in. So really you see, it was a, overall a, a pretty simple upgrade. So you'll notice it's completely flush and we are good to go. So riser one is fully installed. Uh, I recommend saving these things. You never know when you're gonna be able to use those brackets again. Uh, you're gonna pop your top back on and your uh, boss card is installed and now you have uh, two uh, NVMe M.2. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your two M.2 drives 
recognizable by just pretty much any operating system. Unfortunately, once you plug in your PCIe to M.2 adapter and you plug in your two NVMe M.2 drives, it will not work unless you do what we're about to show you. So we're gonna mess with something called bifurcation. It's a very simple process. So once you have your drives installed and your PCIe to M.2 adapter installed, go ahead and boot up your R730. And while it's booting up, um, during post, you wanna go ahead and press F2, which will take us to system setup, and then click on system BIOS, and then go to integrated devices, and then scroll all the way down to slot bifurcation. So this screen might look a little bit different just depending on where you've installed your drives, but for us it's slot 4, so we're going to go ahead and click on the drop down and click on X4, 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 X4 bifurcation. And really, we're just going to go ahead and back out, uh, click yes so we can save our changes, and we can go ahead and reboot our system. See? Super, super easy. Um, and the reason we want to do this is that our PCIe slot it only really reads the adapter as one device. So when we do this slot bifurcation, it's almost breaking up our PCIe slot into separate PCIe slots. Obviously not physically, this is, this is all virtually, but it's basically virtually breaking it down into uh, multiple different slots. And because we're doing this, then we're able to read the two drives that we have installed onto our adapter. So if you guys found anything in this video useful, go ahead, leave a like, smash the subscribe button. And if you're interested in buying a custom built server or even an R730, uh, we do have those in stock. So go ahead, you can go to our website or you can message us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Thank you guys and have a great day.